Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> you bet. The Kraft Cheese Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products, presents Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve. Kraft brings you the great Gildersleeve every week at this time, written by John Whedon and Sam Moore, with music by Claude Sweet. We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But first, let's see how quickly you boys and girls listening in can guess the food I'm about to describe. Now, this food is high in energy value. It's a food you enjoy at every meal, and it makes bread, toast, and rolls taste extra good. Oh, yes, and it's made by Kraft. Have you guessed it yet? Well, you boys and girls who said parquet margarine can go to the head of the class and say you can tell Mother there's no guessing about which spread will please your taste. Once you've tried parquet and find out how good it tastes, you'll know why parquet's fresh, delicate flavor is preferred in millions of American homes. Remember, too, that every pound of parquet contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. So ask Mother to buy parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. The nourishing spread that tastes so good. Parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Now let's see what goes on in Summerfield. Ah, yes, in the society column of the Summerfield Indicator appears this item. Huh? Oh, the post-Lenten social season is in full swing these days, and everything is gay, gay. One of the highlights of the season occurred last evening at the charming home of prominent Mrs. Leela Ransom, who supported the war effort with an informal reception and buffet supper in honor of prominent ah, Mr. Ah, but J we're getting ahead of our story. Let's go back a day. Let's go back a day and up one flight to the bedroom of Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, where that prominent figure finds himself cornered by his niece and nephew. How about it, Uncle? Yes, Uncle Mort, how about it? You've been putting it off and putting it off. You said a week ago, you promised. And this is the day they're collecting the clothes. The high school's sending a truck around. Now, and... just a minute. One at a time. Well, I ask him first. I get the most. You do not. We divide it evenly. I don't see where you well, get off the just it, exactly it, it, One at a time, one at a time. Mr. Gildersleeve! One at a time. I mean, excuse me, Bertie. Uh, Mr. Gilsey, while you're at it. Yes? I'm getting the clothes ready for the malls. Uh, you got anything you want to care? <laughs> well, yes, Bertie. I've got a few things in my closet here. My tuxedo, for instance. Uncle Mort, you'll never wear that tuxedo again. Now, why don't you give that to the drive? Me, me, I get the tuxedo. Oh, no, you don't. Now, wait a minute. Whoop. Leroy, pick up that tuxedo. It slipped off the hammer, Uncle. I didn't even touch it. Pick it up. I was gonna. Bring it here. Okay. He look at it. My goodness, I got to dust out that closet. Doesn't matter if it's a little dusty, young. The Russians won't care. Just for that, I think you ought to give it to me. Nothing doing. I need it more than she does, Unc. If we bring 50 pounds of clothes to school for the drive, we get a free ticket to the movies. Objective Burma. It's neat. Hello, Flynn. But our Jeff school is... is collecting today, Uncle Mort. The truck's coming around this morning. Wait we... a minute. A free ticket, Unc. Objective Burma. Errol Flynn. The clothes are for the Russians. They're not for Errol Flynn. <laughs> Hold on now. The clothes are mine, so keep your shirt on, both of you. I'll decide what's to be done with them. But, Uncle, if I bring 50 pounds to school, I get a free ticket to the movies. I heard that, Leroy. Objective Burma. I heard that, too. Errol Flynn. Errol, I know. <laughs> Bertie. Yes, sir? Take the tuxedo downstairs, hang it on the line, and air it thoroughly. Then put it in mothballs. Oh. Oh, Uncle Mort, you'll never wear it. Well, what about it, Miss Gilsey? Take the tuxedo downstairs. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's see what I can give away here. Hmm. Ought to have a light put in this closet. I can't even... Oh, please. Yeah. Take it easy, Unc. Too many hangers in here. Oh, too many clothes. <laughs> Got a good mind to give them all away. Here, take this, somebody. I get that, Marty. He gave it to me. I get it. Nobody gets it till I see what it is. It's your old army uniform. Oh, I can't let that go. Now, Uncle Mort, what possible use is that? My dear, this war isn't over yet. No, but it will be the day they take you. What? <laughs> is that so? Let me out of here. 
Just for that young man, Marjorie gets the uniform. No fair. You can have the next thing. How about this, Uncle Mort? Those are my golf knickers. But you never play golf. Well, I might. I have to beat Judge Hooker every so often just to keep him in his place, the old goat. Besides, the Russians haven't got time to play golf. That's not the point. There's material enough in those knickers to make suits for three or four children. I think you exaggerate, my dear. <laughs> I'll put them aside. I'll think about them. Next. Well, how about these? These pants. Oh, no. Those are my working pants. I wear those when I work around the house. You haven't used them in five years. <laughs> hmm. On second thought, I guess I'll let them go. You're growing up now, Leroy. Time you learn to do a few things around the place. He. <laughs> Here, catch, Leroy. They're yours. Now, what else? Let's see. How about this? Are you crazy? That's what I wear to church. And I'm going next Sunday. Well, that's all then. Gosh, is this all we get up? Just the uniform and the pants? With all those people freezing over there? Well, it isn't very much, is it? No, it's not. Uncle Mort, now that tuxedo, you don't really need that. Not really. Well, all right. Bertie! Oh, Bertie! You come, Mr. Gilsey? Yeah, you got that tuxedo down there? Yes, sir. Well, I've changed my mind, Bertie. Bring it up. This is Miss Gilsey. I gave it a good brush, and I'm just gonna hang it out on the line. By George, that's a handsome outfit. You know it, Bertie? Yes, it sure is. You know, I hate to let it go. <laughs> well, goodbye, old Tux. Let's have it, Uncle. No, just a minute. Yes, sir. Some of the happiest hours of my life were spent in that tuxedo. The only suit I ever had made to order. Cost me $75. Look at those lapels, Marjorie. Real silk. You don't see that anymore. And that vest. Silk brocade, top to bottom. Look at the jacket. Look at the way it hangs, even on the hanger. Uh, that style. It, what's a peanut bar doing in the pocket? Can I have it, Unc? What, the peanut bar? I'm afraid it's pretty stale, my boy. Can't be too stale for me. Yeah. Yeah, you may be right. I don't want to rush you, Uncle Mort, but the truck will be coming by here any minute, so we ought to bundle up the clothes and be ready. Now, just a minute. I haven't entirely made up my mind. You mean you're not going to let us have the tuxedo? Well, I don't know. Cost me $75. I don't care what it costs. You never wear it, and you don't need it. Not the way the Russians do. Confound it. What do the Russians want with my tuxedo? It isn't just the Russians. I suppose Stalin is going to wear it to state functions. <laughs> I suppose he needs it to go to San Francisco. Stalin isn't going to San Francisco. Well, neither is my tuxedo. <laughs> Bertie, take it down again and hang it on the line. Up and down, up and down. Take it away, bring it back. I declare this house gets crazy all the time. Oh, my goodness, now what's that? Doorbell, doorbell. I'm coming. All day long, up and down, up and down. You, Oh, it's Mrs. Ransom. Hey, wait a minute, Bertie, I'll go. Uncle Mort, what about the tuxedo? Can we have it? Oh, yeah, yeah, don't bother me now. <laughs> I hope you'll forgive me barging in like this, Shark Martin. Uh, glad to see you any time. Hey, come in and sit down. Oh, I couldn't. You're just going to hate me when you know what I came over for, Shark Martin. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> well, I've come to steal Bertie. What? what? Oh, you needn't be frightened. It's just for the evening. But I've got to have help because I'm giving a party. Party? Mm, all of a sudden, yes. A buffet supper. You're invited, of course. I'm giving it for an old, old friend of mine who's just come to town. James Eustace Calhoun. James Eustace Calhoun? Calhoun. James Eustace Calhoun. Never heard of him. Uh, you wouldn't, of course. He was a friend of my late husband's. James Eustace and Beauregard grew up together down in Savannah. Oh, uh. Friend of Beauregard's, huh? Mm, his best friend. He's sort of related by marriage to my cousin Tupper Hathaway. Oh, he was terribly in love with me at one time. But then so was George William Hungerford. They were so cute. <laughs> they used to call on me together, James Eustace and George William. I just couldn't make up my mind between them. But then along came Beauregard and settled the whole thing. Oh. Uh, is that the doorbell? Yeah, pardon me. Bertie, doorbell. I'm coming. <laughs> Bertie's been having a hard day. Uh, okay. Miss Marge, if the truck hasn't been cold. Oh, tell him to wait, Bertie. I'll be right down. Well, 
I've got to be running along, Throckmorton. You will come to my party, won't you? You bet. I'll be there. And you promise not to be jealous. Jealous of what? James Eustace Calhoun. Why should I be jealous of him? Well, gracious, he's so handsome. Hmm. Looks aren't everything. Mm, and he's the loveliest dancer. What do I care? I'm not going to dance with him. <laughs> Silly. He has the most elegant manners. He's a diplomat, you know. Oh, he is, eh? What's he doing up here? Well, I don't know exactly, but it's for the government. It's terribly secret, I suppose. Anyway, I'm so excited. I just can't wait till I see him again. I know you'll be impressed by him, Throckmorton. Well, I've met diplomats before. I shook hands with Jim Farley once. Oh, but James Eustace is different. Hmm? More the lean, handsome type. I just love the way he dresses. You know so few men know how to dress well. He wears imported tweeds and things like that. Oh, simply divine. Oh, but gracious, here yeah, I'm rambling on. Oh, there's one thing, Throckmorton. Yeah? Uh, as the hostess, naturally, I'll be looking after James Eustace most of the evening, so... What about me? Well, I thought if you wouldn't mind taking Eve Goodwin, I told her you'd call for her. Now, wait a minute. Maybe I don't want to take Eve Goodwin. Well, I think she's terribly attractive, but of course, if you don't want to, I'm sure Judge Hooker would be only... Now, hold on. I didn't say I wouldn't. After all, Eve and I are good friends. I'll call for her, sure. Only, gosh. Rock Martin, I'm afraid you're just a teensy bit jealous. I am not. <laughs> you be nice to James Eustace now, and don't let me catch you boys fighting over me, you hear? Goodbye now, and don't forget... Uh, Betty, I expect I'll be seeing you this evening. Yes, ma'am, if you want me. Won't you? I don't know what I'd do without you. James Eustace Calhoun. <laughs> Sounds like a gigolo to me. Such a gorgeous dancer. But he can't sing a note. <laughs> but he can't even carry a tune. If he's so tall and handsome, why isn't he in uniform instead of walking around in tweeds? <laughs> Thinks he's such a fancy dresser. Why, George, I could show her and show James Eustace. Uncle Mort, are they still there? Is who still where? The men with the truck for the clothes drive. They're waiting out here. Oh, thank goodness. Hey, wait, wait. Bertie, stop her. Stop her. Miss Marjorie, your uncle wants you. What does he want? Bring back that tuxedo. But Uncle Mort, you promised the Russians. Don't worry about the Russians. They're the best dressed people in Berlin right now. <laughs> this is one time I gotta have that tuxedo. <laughs> Sleeve will be with us again in just a few seconds. You know, most American families are big bread eaters, and if yours is a family of average size, they may eat as many as six loaves of bread a week. Now, that adds up to a lot of slices, and it can add up to a lot of good eating enjoyment, too, when you spread slices of bread and toast and sandwiches with delicious parquet margarine. Parquet's fresh, delicate flavor really satisfies, makes bread rolls, pancakes, and waffles taste so good, you'll want to eat more. And as for good nutrition, Listen to this. Economical parquet is actually one of the best energy foods you can eat. What's more, every single pound of parquet is guaranteed to contain 9,000 units of important vitamin A. So for flavor that really satisfies for energy and vitamin A, be sure to buy parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine. Ask for the spread that tastes so good. Parquet made by Kraft. <laughs> Now, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve, who's donned his finery and is now on his way to Leela Ransom's party. In a few moments, he'll be calling for Miss Eve Goodwin, but first we find him stopping off at Peavy's Drugstore for a cigar. Oh, pardon me, Peavy's Pharmacy. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, greetings, Peavy. Greetings and salutations. Hmm, I judge from your get-up, you're going to some kind of a party. What do you mean, get-up? Yeah, a tuxedo and a boiled shirt and a brocaded vest. Are, are those pearl studs on the vest, Mr. Gilson? Well, mother of pearl. Pearl's a little ostentatious. I say, say. Is the, this a meeting or just a social affair? Oh, purely social, Peavy. Mrs. Ransom is giving a reception for some bigwig from Washington. I guess he wants to impress it. You know how these fellows are. They'd rather dress than eat. Oh, no, I didn't say that. <laughs> yes, they would. 
Those fellas put on a cutaway to go out and sit in the backyard. But I'll show him he's not visiting a bunch of hayseeds out here. Ever see my gold cigar cutter? There. Well, well, I was wondering what you had on the end of that chain. My grandfather's gold watch is on the other end. (coughs) Doesn't keep time anymore, but it looks, well, substantial. It looks substantial, all right. Must weigh a pound and a half. (laughs) Where'd you get the walking stick, Mr. Gildersleeve? It's quite some time since I've seen a gold-headed cane. Belonged to my great-uncle Albert. The gold knob's a little loose, but it stays on if you know how to hold it. Yeah, maybe a little message would help. No, not necessary. I'll put the knob in my pocket when I get there. <laughs> Let's see, uh, what did I come in here for? Oh, yes, yes, cigars. I want the most expensive cigars you have, Peavy. Yes, sir. You mean the fee for half? Is that the best you can do? Well, no, but that's as high as you've ever gone, Mr. Gillespie. I'm establishing a new ceiling, Peavy. The sky is the limit. Well, I've got a cigar here that costs 50 cents straight. Hmm. How do these look to you? No band. No, sir. This particular cigar doesn't carry a band. Well, then how's anybody going to know it costs 50 cents? <laughs> well, I could tie a little price tag around it. <laughs> what? No, don't try to be funny, Peavy. Just give me six of those three for half. Then I'll know where I stand, and so will everybody else. Yes, sir. That'll be one dollar plus the tax. I'll just put them in my cigar case. Mm, that's very handsome. Leather. This part here is gold filled. You don't say. Uh, One dollar plus the tax, Mr. Young. I'm trying to get the money, Peavy. Mm. Got my change in my watch pocket here. If I can... mm. Maybe if you took your gloves off, you could... Mm. Mm. You'll charge it, Peavy. <laughs> That charge it shall be. Well, have a good time, Mr. Gildersleeve. I will, Peavy. I'll be the belle of the ball and the queen of the May. Queen of the May. Looks like a monkey on a stick. Come in, Clark Morton. The door's not locked. Eve, where are you? Have a chair, Clark Morton. I'll be ready in just a second women. All they think of is dressing up like a plush horse. Well, might as well sit down and be comfortable. (laughs) Vest is getting a little tight. Still, it makes me look slender. (sighs) How have you been, Eve? I've been fine, Dr. Morton. How have you been? Fine. What the dickens are you putting on that takes so long? I'm going to show you right now. (laughs) <laughs> oh, my goodness. What's the matter? <laughs> Nothing. Huh? <laughs> I thought maybe there was something the matter with my clothes. Oh, no. They're perfect. Uh, how do I look? Say, pretty, tasty. Is that a new dress, or did you just have a tightened? <laughs> Not more. <laughs> Only joking, of course, Eve. Come on, we'll be the handsomest couple ever seen in Summerfield. Uh, Have to be careful getting up and down. Good evening, Mr. Gillsleeve. Good evening, Miss Goodwin. Well, hello, Bertie. Fancy finding you here. Good evening, Bertie. May I take your wraps, folks? The drawing room is right to the left. It, drawing room? It's the parlor. It, oh, yeah. Why, yeah. hey, darling, how lovely to... Throckmorton, what on earth have you got on? Come here, everybody, and look at Throckmorton. <laughs> Leela. <laughs> well, well, Gildy, you look just like a waiter. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, Judge? <laughs> Don't you own a tuxedo? I'm afraid you're the only man that's dressed up, Throckmorton. I am? What happened to the diplomat? Oh, my land, aren't I terrible? Here we are all standing out here, and my guest of honor's all by himself in the drawing room. Come in, everybody, and meet him. Come on. Uh, you suppose that's the fellow, Eve? He's the only stranger inside. An old tweed suit. Ha! Oh, come here and meet Mr. Calhoun, Eve. Miss Goodwin, Mr. James Eustace Calhoun. How do you do? I'm totally charmed, Miss Goodwin. 
Oh, brother. <laughs> and Mr. Gildersleeve, Mr. Calhoun, and Mr. Calhoun's from Washington, Throckmorton. <laughs> I know. How do you do? I'm proud and happy to meet you, sir. I understand you're in government yourself, sir. A government? Oh, yes, yes. I'm a servant of the people like yourself, Mr. Calhoun. <laughs> yeah. A government service is a tradition in my family, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, wasn't your grandfather a governor, James Eustace? Uh, on my mother's side, yes, Leela. Well, my grandfather was a deputy sheriff. <laughs> I see. Uh, won't you ladies have a chair, uh, Miss Goodwin? Thank you. Here, let me get a chair for you, Leela. And I was getting her a chair, Horace. Oh, now, now, boys, don't you fight over me here. Oh, I-, I wonder if y'all would excuse me a minute. There's something I forgot to ask my maid. Well, certainly. Oh, now, don't get up, James Eustace. I'll be right back. Charming woman. Charming. Summerfield seems to have more than its share of charming ladies, if I may say so, Miss Goodwin. Oh, is that the diplomat speaking, Mr. Calhoun? The diplomat? Mrs. Ransom tells me you're with the State Department down in Washington. Well, not exactly. I'm in the personnel division of the WVD. Oh, huh? what's that? Uh, one of the war agencies. Uh, most of our work is confidential. Oh, it must be awfully interesting. It is, ma'am. I'd love to hear about it. It's not as interesting to me at the moment, ma'am, as you are. Uh, could I have the pleasure of dancing with you? Oh, I didn't know there was dancing. We've rolled up the rug in the dining room. The phonograph is in there, if you do me the honor. Well, that sounds lovely. Uh, you'll excuse me, Jack Morton. Oh, sure. Don't get up. I wasn't. Oh. <laughs> 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 Hurry back, Eve. I shall return your lady unharmed, Mr. Gillis, please. Hmm. Just wants to show off what a good dancer he is. How do you know he's a good dancer? Leela says he's a regular Vernon Castle. I'd know anyway. All these slick fellows that talk that way are good dancers. I hate them. Uh, look at him. Bowing and smiling. And wearing an old tweed suit. Mr. Calhoun, I must say you're a marvelous dancer. Isn't it simply divine? Oh, stop or we'll spoil it. I'm afraid you ladies have already spoiled me for dancing with ordinary partners. Throckmorton, why aren't you dancing? I don't want to. Oh, come on, Throckmorton. I just love the way you swing me around. <laughs> he almost frightens me to death, James Eustace. Why, I imagine Mr. Gildersleeve is a beautiful dancer. Well, I've had a few compliments in my time. Eve? Would you do me the honor? Oh, I wish you'd excuse me for a few minutes, Doc Morton. I'm a little out of breath. Oh. Well, how about you, Leela? Shall we uh, tread a measure? Oh, let's just talk for a minute, shall we? I'm dying to know just what James Eustace does down there in Washington. Oh, my job is mostly routine, Leela. Signing reports, filling out forms, and so on. I imagine the judge here has a much more interesting job than I have. What about me? I find the bench very satisfactory, Mr. Calhoun. A judge gets a chance to study human nature. I've always believed, as the poet said, that the proper study of mankind is man. Very true, Judge. Very true. Well, now, as water commissioner, If I... you will uh, permit me, Gildy. Mr. Calhoun, a judge sees a good deal of human flotsam and jetsam in the course of a year. A water commissioner sees plenty, too. Gildy. But the fellow that reads the meters, he sees everything. <laughs> <laughs> about to tell Mr. Calhoun of an interesting case that came up in the winter term. Oh, Horace. How would it be if I'd sing, Leela, as long as everybody's too tired to dance? Tired, Mercy, I'm not tired, Throckmorton. Well, uh, Come on, James Eustace, let's dine, shall we? Your wish is my command, Leela. How about a lovely romantic waltz this time? I always love waltzing with you. I always love waltzing with you. <laughs> Bureaucrat. Now, Throckmorton, I think he's very nice. Would you like to dance? Sure. Eve. Uh, guess I better not, Eve. This coat's a little tight, and if I raise my arms, oh. zip. Mm. Eve, could I have the pleasure? Oh, I certainly, Judge. Oh. Excuse us, Gildy. <laughs> I don't know whether I mentioned it, Mr. Calhoun, but I sing a little. That's a grand gift, Mr. Gildersleeve. I envy you, sir. 
Uh, as I was saying, Miss Goodwin, one of my closest friends is a very important man in the Navy Department. Eve, wouldn't you like to hear me sing? I have, Dr. Morton. Yes, yeah, And this friend of mine remarked the other day that, in his opinion, we'll have regular plane service across the Atlantic within five years. I wouldn't want that to get around, of course. I won't tell a soul. Well, what's going on in here, Secret? Leela, wouldn't you like to hear me sing? Well, later, Throckmorton, we're going to have supper night. Supper? Well, uh, just one short song then, huh? Kind of relax everybody before they eat? Well, I'm not sure it would, Throckmorton. You put so much into your singing. Oh, come on, Leela. You play for me. Well, everybody else wants you to, do they? Well, they all love music, don't they? I do, and I'd like to hear you sing anyway, Gilda. <laughs> I'd rather hear you than listen to any more of Calhoun's conversation. Yeah, well, thank you, Judge. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve has consented to favor us with a vocal selection. Well, that's just fine. You'll be accompanied at the piano by our charming host. How lovely. I shall endeavor to present the dramatic ballad, Chloe. Leela? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a very good key. <clears throat> Chloe. Oop. <laughs> Mother of Pearl stud. Grab it, Horace. <laughs> Chloe. I, I, I've got it, Throckmorton. Someone calling. No reply. Nightshade's falling. Hear him sigh. Chloe. Throckmorton, it went down my dress. Chloe. Oh. Is that another stud? No, that was a pants button. I'm going home and change my clothes. gave my tuxedo to the United National Clothing Drive after all. And then I found they don't want tuxedos. So I'm stuck with it. <laughs> uh, seriously, there are millions of people in Europe who need clothing desperately. It's hard for us to realize over here, but it's a fact that many people in Europe have died from exposure. So go through your closets, dig out the stuff that's still good, that you don't really need, and turn it into the local committee of the United National Clothing Collection. Ask yourself, what can I spare that they can wear? And then give generously. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Music on this program was directed by Claude Sweet. Ben Carpenter, speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company, makers of Parquet Margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Kraft invites you to listen again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gilders League. <laughs>wonderful help in menu planning. It's Pabstet, the delicious golden cheese food. The cheese food that's so nourishing, so easy to digest, so useful in a hundred appetizing ways. For a tempting main dish, blend Pabstet's mellow cheddar cheese flavor into nourishing, economical macaroni and au gratin dishes. Or melt Pabstet into a smooth, luscious cheese sauce to pour over vegetables, hard-cooked eggs, chicken or fish. For lunchbox sandwiches or after-school treats, Spread delicious Pabstead on graham crackers or between layers of white or whole wheat bread. There's actually a hundred different ways to please your family with Pabstead. And remember, Pabstead supplies many important food elements. Muscle-building protein, milk minerals, vitamin A, and the important vitamin called riboflavin. So for delightful menu surprises, buy wholesome, nourishing Pabstead. Whenever you can, serve this delicious golden cheese food, Pabstead.